In 10 ABY, Palpatine's Dark Empire struck from the Deep Core, with a blitzkrieg the likes of which the galaxy had never seen. Over a dozen dreadnoughts assaulted the Core, then, without reason, turned on each other, devastating key planets in an Imperial Civil War. As the Republic tried to survive the conflict, while also fanning the flames of Imperial descent, Palpatine hit the galaxy with a second wave of forces, the true beginning of Operation Shadow Hand. The great war fleet which emerged from the Deep Core was powered by technology the likes of which had never before been seen within the galaxy. Leading these new forces were world devastators, planet smashing super weapons which targeted worlds sympathetic to the New Republic. They traveled to the surface of planets, destroying everything in their path and processing collected material into new weapons of war. One of the planets targeted was Mon Calamari, which had long been on the Emperor's hit list. The Empire moved in with a fleet from Biss. This included an Allegiance class Star Destroyer, a flotilla of smaller ships, and of course, the World Devastators themselves. The planet's defenses were very quickly overwhelmed, as the World Devastators tore away even the mighty Mon Cala shipyards. The rest of the fleet remained in orbit, blockading the planet as the Devastators moved down to the surface. New Republic forces on the planet attempted an evacuation and counterattack. However, they were woefully underarmed. A response fleet led by Generals Antilles and Calrissian and comprised of the Emancipator, a captured Imperial Star Destroyer, several Mon Calamari cruisers, including new MC-90s, and smaller frigates and corvettes was marshaled. As it traveled from Pinnacle Base, the fleet in hyperspace received a transmission from Mon Cala. Using this data, the New Republic pinpointed the likely location of the blockading Imperial fleet and modified their hyperspace jump so they'd essentially come out on top of the enemy with guns blazing. The Allegiance, the flagship of the Imperial fleet in orbit, which had been transmitting footage of Mon Cala's destruction, was obliterated in the opening volley, while the more numerous New Republic ships managed to take care of the remaining Imperial forces. Starfighters launched from the fleet and headed planetside to take on the Devastators, which responded by launching newly constructed TIE droids and ascending towards space. There, the Silencer 7, the lead ship of the Devastators, consumed the the Emancipator. The New Republic returned fire, but conventional weapons seemed incapable of harming the Devastators. As the Emancipator is destroyed, a second Rebel fleet, comprised of starfighters and support ships, arrives. However, even with advanced A-Wings, the shields of the superweapons could not be pierced. Near the surface, Wedge leads a squad of V-Wings, which manage to take down several smaller World Devastator types. To see that played out, check out Star Wars Explained's playthrough of Rogue Squadron. The Battle of Mon Cala is the final level of that game, and Alex does a great job of mixing lore with gameplay, and his Rogue Squadron Let's Play is one of my favorite series on YouTube. I'll link to that down in the description. Nonetheless, even with some of the smaller Devastators destroyed, the planet is still terribly under siege. The Silencer 7 remains in space, destroying various rebel ships, including the Mon Ramonda, former flagship of Han Solo during the hunt for Zinj. The only thing which stops the onslaught is a secret shutdown code, stolen by Luke Skywalker, who had pretended to fall to the dark side. The code was hidden on R2-D2. Initially, the repulsors and shields are shut down, but the factories remained operational. The New Republic launched strike teams, however, they're pushed back by the automated factories of the Devastators. However, R2 eventually engineers a total override code, which allows him to take direct control, and the Devastators are set to consume each other. With the major opposition on planet destroyed, the New Republic is able to clean up any remaining Imperial forces. However, the Mon Cala shipyards were devastated, seriously hurting the New Republic war effort, and as we learn in Dark Apprentice, the planet itself would still be rebuilding over a year later when it was attacked by Admiral Dalla. The New Republic should be very, very thankful that they managed to stop the world devastators. These super weapons, which were called more dangerous than the Death Star, would have tore the galaxy apart. In the end, however, the win at Mon Cala was a fairly serious military and morale victory. I do, however, see a lost opportunity. If the New Republic was able to take control of the world devastators, they should have put them to use. 
troops, send them towards an Imperial fleet, and watch them tear it apart. Now, there is actually a case where the New Republic did take control of a single Devastator and used it for cleanup duties, however, some saw the association to the Empire as a bit troubling. Still, I think desperate times should call for desperate measures. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know what you'd like to see me break down next, and don't forget, for a different perspective on this battle, check out the video on Alex's channel. Again, there's a link to that down in the description. Anyway, until next time guys, as always, this has been Eckhart's Letter. May the Force be with you.